I'm here, Norman, in your home. Uh, thank you very much for allowing us to, to come and talk to you today. Uh, Norman, you are um, the former forestry officer from a Agriculture and Forestry Department. You retired in 1990 uh, and were working for them for, from 1945 to 1990. And um, I'm, I'm here today to, to, to ask you a few questions about what your experience was particularly in, in the early days of, of your work with, with forestry in the sort of 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and, and to, 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 to find out a little bit more about uh, a tree that's particularly uh, close to my heart, and I know it's close to your heart, uh, the Centelene Redwood. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to find out a little bit more and um, looking forward to uh, hearing, hearing what you, you, you can tell us about it. So, so firstly, perhaps you can just um, explain what it was like working in the agriculture and forestry department when you when you first started. It's, it's very interesting. I enjoy working there, and lots of other chaps as well enjoy working at A N F at that time. Mm -hmm. And what, what, you know. What what was it like? You know what 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 did the island look like? In, you know what were the challenges that you faced in in forestry at, at that time? Well, in those days, there's not that many trees like this today. You see, mm -hmm. the island was quite barren. The, yeah, the island was very barren then. We we, we was had to know. Plant more trees and to keep the island going with timber and so on. And where where were you planting trees? Well, mostly in the Gubman forest in Payson's and Blue Hill and all, all around the island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and 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 with, you mentioned it was for for, for forestry for fuel wood. Was it was it also for? I mean, the, the island was quite barren. I think there was a lot of thought about. Controlling soil erosion as well. Yes, control. Yes. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. And um, you, you were working. Um, you were working there in the fifties and the sixties. Yes. And it was during that time, or I, I don't know what year it is, but hopefully you can remember that you came across the Centelena redwood. Yes. How can you tell me how how did that happen? What what ha you know? How did you come across it? Well, Mr. Harold Gray didn't know where the tree was growing in his days, and he directed me to go and look for it. And uh, he said that uh, most of those trees were grown in the, the high peak area, you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the back of the high peak, I found this tree near the waterfall. Okay, mm -hmm. and that I think that's Peak, Peak Gut Waterfall. Yes. is that right? Yeah. Looking, looking down to Sand Bay and Peak, uh, yeah, Peak. Yeah, Peak Death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite, quite a steep. Well, it's a, a steep waterfall and a deep gut. Mm -hmm. How? I mean, what? How? How did you find it? I mean, did, what was the vegetation that you had to go through? I mean, well, it was mostly flax that I had to go through, and mm -hmm. other. Plants, yam lilies, and so on. It's quite a quite a big uh, big place, you know. I mean, yeah. No, it's quite uh, okay. Well, actually, many many years ago, you actually took me down there yes. to show me, didn't you, where you where you found it? And that's that's a few years ago now. But I, even then, it was quite a, a a challenge to to get down into the gut to see. Actually, because it was right at the base of the waterfall, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, and, and 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 probably protected because of that, because it hadn't been cut down. Mm -hmm. So, what's when you found it? Did you know what you found? Yes, Mr. Gray. He described the tree to me before I left Scotland. You see, mm -hmm. and when I got on to the point where you could see it in the distance. That was uh, 
polygon tree, mm-hmm. loaded with flowers, white and pinky flowers, and lots of seed, covered with lots of yam lilies and flax, you see. Mm-hmm. It was fully grown and somewhere about eight, uh, two meters tall. Wow. Okay, so it, it, it rose up above the vegetation that it was, yes. was in, so you, that's how you could see it. And, and the flowering, because the flowering is quite spectacular, isn't mm-hmm. it, on a redwood? It's so I put the f- leaves, the leaves and the flowers to take back to show Mr. the grey, mm-hmm. and he said yes, that was, he confirmed that that was the tree, you see. And, and, and who was Mr. Gray? He was the uh, boss. The, in the head of agriculture and forestry. Yes. Oh, brilliant. So he confirmed that, yes, you had indeed found the redwood. Yes. But that there was only one of them. One in the time. Oh. And, and were you able to collect seed at the time or just the I the just flower? collect a few seed. But after I had to go back to collect more seeds so that we could plant in our nursery. Mm-hmm. And and how, how did you get the seed? How, what did you need to do to, to make sure that you, you were gathering seed? Well, you had to climb the tree more or less and pick the seed. It was uh, quite easy getting the seed because uh, you had to be there at the right time to collect the seed. Uh, because when the pipe burst, the, with the, the seed would spread all over the place, you see. Okay. And I think you did something special to, to make sure that you you could save seed. Well, I uh, got half a dozen jam bottles and put the seed in when it was green. And then when it ripe, you see, it, it stayed in the bottle. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> so do you know how many, over? How, how, for how long were you going down to collect seed? Well, all through the year we go different times, you see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't think I asked, but um, what year was that? Uh, 1951. 1951, <laughs> brilliant. So there, there you are as a young young apprentice or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and there you were heading off into into the wilds collecting <laughs> collecting redwood seed brilliant 1951 and and how how long did you do that for well we did it for a couple of years because you couldn't get all the amount of seed that you did need you see mm-hmm. and it was such a far distance to travel so brilliant and what what happened to the seed after you collected it? Well, we planted it in our nursery, and, and gem- most of the seed germinate, and then we planted it out into the tin pots, yeah, the beer cans that, that they call. Yeah, and they grew well. Oh, they, they did do very, very well. Brilliant. And then we pl- uh, after they got big enough, six inches tall. We plant them in uh, the, K, uh, the peak, high peak area. Okay, at, 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 the, at, the, at the top of high peak? High peak, yeah. Oh, okay, brilliant. Mm. And I think, um, so uh, uh, were there other places where you, you, where you planted them? Well, you planted some in Scotland. Mm-hmm. And I think afterwards we managed to plant some up at uh, Diana's Peak as well. Oh really? Okay. Mm. Okay. Brilliant. And um, how how once they were planted, how well did they do? Well, they did quite well to a certain extent, but the rabbits in the high peak area they destroy most of the, of the plants. Mm. No, that's that's hard, isn't it? Mm. Yes. yes, we got the net and wide to put around, but they still. Still managed to get yeah. to them yeah. <laughs> after all that hard work. <laughs> Brilliant. Now that's well. I mean, it's. I think by the time I came 
to St Helena. So I first visited in 1993, mm -hmm. and at that time I think there was probably one of the original trees at, at High Peak. Uh, I think, or I might just have missed it. I think it was in a cage. There was a one that was in a cage. Yes. That uh, George Benjamin had put in a cage to protect it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the one that you, uh, you planted at Scotland, I didn't didn't see that. That one had, no, had gone. No, probably not. It was plant near the office. Yes. So we could, after it got so high, we could collect seed from there. After you see. And then I think the ones that that that, that survived, um, then they were, were also planted back at at High Peak, yes. and and it was those that I saw in 1993. Mm -hmm. Now, if 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 you hadn't collected that seed uh, and 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 enabled those seed to be germinated and propagated. There, there wouldn't have been anything, you know. There, there would have been no, no future for the, for the redwood. Redwood, yeah. Um, so what, what happened to the tree at Peak Gut? Because that, that's not with us anymore. What, what happened to that one? Well, as far as I know, that the, it probably died or. Did, did you didn't see it decline? Did you see it decline? No, I didn't go back all that often after you yeah. So I think we think it died around 1960. Would that be about right? 60. Yeah. Do you think, how, do you, how long do you think it survived? I thought it was in the 90s, you know. In the 1960s. Yeah, that's a pity. So it's sad to see. So when that tree died, uh, the redwood became officially extinct in the wild oh, I see. so it, that's when it became extinct in the wild and afterwards obviously it was what was being cultivated and now planted back mm -hmm. so that led that discovery and that work led to keeping the a, a very rare endemic tree alive and and it's still going and hopefully going strong today. So I, I'm certainly very grateful for you for the work that you did back then. Yes. Um, because it was really, really important and you know we, we, we do have today on the island the redwood for people to enjoy and see. And um, although there aren't any at High Peak anymore, uh, there are um, the hybrid and that's another story and the ebony. Uh, there are some good plantings now at, at Caysons in the George Benjamin Arboretum and some at the Peaks, up at Diana's Peak again, um, and, and, and on other places. So there are places now where people can go and see and enjoy the St. Lena Redwood. That is good. Yeah, so I think that, that's really exciting. Brilliant. So thank you for that. I, I, I wouldn't have, um, probably wouldn't have ever come to the island if you hadn't saved the redwood because that's what brought me here uh, all those years ago and um, hopefully we can, we can make sure that the, the Centralina redwood is there for millennia to come. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And in f if we keep planting trees now, and in another 50 years, the island should be covered right down to the sea in another 50 years' time. I, 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 yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, the island is going to become a very green and lush place yes. once again. Yes, you can see quite a lot of trees grown in round about the, yeah. the island now. And again, that's, you know, that early work that was done in, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, with all of the planting that that went on around the, in the crown wastes, um, I mean, hundreds of thousands of trees must yes. have. Um, I mean, incredible amount of of trees were were planted and and, and trenches dug, 
uh, to, to to start revegetating and controlling erosion. I mean, if you look at all of the uh, uh, revegetation now um, towards Flagstaff, you know, all that sort of Flagstaff area as well, the level wood. The yes, we put down trial plots in Flagstaff and the endemic forest to see which trees would take off the best. And would you believe that the, the gumwood was the best in the Millennium Forest before? Yeah, yeah, and you planted eucalyptus there as well? Was that part of the trial? No, I or didn't salt know. Bush. salt bush. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because the, the soil in uh, that area is very salt, you see, mm. and not many trees will grow in salt. Mm. Saline soil. Mm. And again, that's something that people don't don't uh, might not know much about. That actually the the early work that was carried out at at Horse Point yeah. for for trialling gumwood planting um, that was carried out. Uh, what when that was about nineteen nineties? No, there was, was earlier. Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. Yeah. Mm. Incredible pioneering work mm. to to, as you say, you're trialling different trees to see which would do best to re-establish in these very barren and eroded soils. And, and look where we are today. Look at the, the Millennium Forest now, um, how far that has come. Yeah. And, and, and soils are being built up, of course. So the, the, more, the more vegetation, the more soil, the more moisture capture, as you say, I think your prediction of having a very green feature is a lovely one. When I first arrived, Norman, yeah. you you were just retiring from uh, you just retired from ANRD. I think you also agriculture and forestry. Yeah. So you retired in 1990, um, but but you were still a, you were still around because I met you in 1993 when I first came. Um, and here we are now, 2020, you're 90 years old, and, well, I'm a lot older than I was as well, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I, you know, you know it's, it's, it's a lot of, lot of history and, and knowledge that you have, and, and thank you so much for, for sharing with that, with that with me today. Thank you. Thank you very much.